Hello, welcome to Zigma Tech Learning Hub. I'll be your instructor for civic education. For this class, we are going to be taking our exercises from the exam guide app. If you don't have the application already installed in your device, I want you to download the app in order to follow along in this class. Exam guide is a leading educational app that helps students prepare adequately for various exams like UTME, Pursue TME, WASE, GCE, KCPE, IJMB, JUPEB, Carbopedia, BESE, JSCE, NCEE, NECO, E2C. You can download the app from www.examguide.com or Google Play Store. Please subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification bell to be updated on new videos. Ready for today's class? Okay, let's get started. In today's class, we are going to talk about the subject matter we have been doing in this subject. Now, we look at the topic, citizenship education. Specifically, by the end of this lesson, you should be able to state the meaning of citizenship education and also civic education. State the importance of citizenship education. Mention the obligations of citizens. State the meaning of national consciousness and the national unity. Then discuss how we can promote national consciousness and the unity in our country, Nigeria. Now, what is citizenship education? Citizenship education refers to the process or act of impacting, imparting the required knowledge and skills, right attitudes and values to citizens, which will enable them to live and participate in developmental activities and other affairs of their state. We also define it as training and sensitization, which moves the character of citizens so that they can conform to the values ethics and expectations of the society. So what we are saying here is that citizenship education is about training, educating and sensitizing citizens about what is expected of them, training them to be the kind of citizen that is expected of them to be in the society. And that is why it is expected that every citizen must go through the process of educating citizens to be responsible citizens that the state, the country, expect from its citizens. Now, let's look at the subject matter, civic education. Now, the word civic refers to member of a city state or of a state of a country, civic. Now, civic education itself is a school subject that trains citizens on their rights, on their duties, and the values of the society. So it's a school subject that um, we learn citizenship education. It's a school subject established for the purpose of citizenship education, that is educating citizens on what is expected of them and what can make them, train them, to be responsible citizens of their society. Now, <clears throat> let's look at the importance of citizenship education. Why do we need them in our society? Now, it creates sense of selflessness in people towards their nation. Through citizenship education, people can acquire the virtue of selflessness towards their nation. Their actions they are thinking their mindset will be directed towards helping and promoting the development of their nations. It also helps to create a sense of allegiance to the people or to the nation and the patriotism. Patriotism, we talk about love and feelings one has for his or her has for his or her country. So citizenship education promotes this love, this sense of allegiance, attachment, support to one's country. It helps to maintain and reinforce national values because in citizenship education, one of the core things we talk about are the, is, is the values of the country. 
We talk about the values. We are we teach you meaning of values and the, the values of the nations that is expected that its citizens we conform to. We also talk about it promotes national development plans and the programs. It promotes it because through citizenship education, citizens are trained to understand what the government is doing, the development plans, and the key into the policies and programs of the government. Also, it ensures self-rule, self-determination, and independence. Now, our nationalists that actually fought for independence of our country did much in citizenship education, sensitizing the people on why we need self-government. It is through mobilization of the citizens by the protests of citizenship education that helped us to achieve independence. So self-determination and independence can be achieved through citizenship training that we call citizenship education. It also promotes self-reliance because self-reliance <clears throat> is part National self-reliance is part of the values we teach because we teach citizenship citizens to be hardworking. So when we teach them, they, it can help the nation to become self-sufficient by hardworking, by youth empowerment that we teach in citizenship education. It helps to mobilize citizens for national unity. That's it promotes national unity in the country because citizens will think about their nation. Citizenship will no longer think, citizens will no longer think about the things that divide them in the country, rather how to promote the goals of their state. It also helps to promote good and the responsible governance because we are going to have citizens that will question the activities of government, participate in the affairs of their society, criticize the government when the government is. And this will help the government to be good and responsible, addressing and attending to the needs of the people in the society. Citizenship education is part of leadership training. It trains the citizens to be leaders of their country. It trains them on how to be responsible leaders because the contents of citizenship education will help one. We also talk about leadership in citizenship education. So it's a part of leadership training. It makes citizens responsible because they will know their obligation, their duties, what is expected of them, and be able to carry them out dutifully. It gives, them, it gives citizens problem-solving skills because it exposes citizens to imagine issues to social problems, uh, civic problems that compound their country and the world, and the solutions to how these problems can be resolved. So it gives them that problem-solving skills, promotes national unity, it promotes knowledge of rights because human rights is one of the cores of civic education or citizenship education. We talk about human rights, how to promote it, how to defend human rights, so we talk about it, so it promotes the knowledge of human rights, makes people to know their rights and be able to defend it when violated. It also informs citizens on the activities of government because it trains citizens to understand the structure of government, the arms of government, the duties of government, what they expect from the government. So it gives them knowledge about the activities. It makes them understand the activities of their government. It also enables citizens to enable, understand the problems of their society because citizens are exposed to imagine issues in their society and how they can solve them. So they will know, they will be abreast with the problems that compound their society. That is why <clears throat> in, civic, in citizenship education, we talk about problems like HIV, talk about problems like terrorism, human trafficking, um, and the rest of them, political apathy, some of the problems that affect our society, including um, electoral malpractice. So citizens are exposed to the problems of their society. Now, in citizenship education, we talk about obligations because we aim 
to make you responsible citizens of your country. But we talk about obligations or duties of citizens. What do we mean by obligations of citizens? They are the duties and roles expected of citizens to perform for the growth and development of their state and for their rights they enjoy. So these are those rules, those functions, duties that citizens are expected to carry out, to perform for the development of their state and in return for the rights they enjoy because the government, the state, protects the rights of the citizens and therefore in turn citizens are expected to continue to perform their roles so that they will enjoy their rights. Now let's look at <clears throat> some of these obligations of citizens. One, obedience to the law of the land. Citizens are expected to respect and obey the rules and regulations of their country. All the rules, the traffic rules and regulations, the constitution of the country, all the laws of the country, citizens are expected to follow them and not violate any of them. Citizens are expected to pay taxes. Now, taxes are paid by income earning members of citizens. They pay from their income and the government makes money or revenue through the taxes paid by the citizens. Because it is through the taxes that government will have money and be able to provide the social amenities, pay workers of government, the public servant, and carry out all the functions expected of government. And that is why citizens are expected to pay taxes. <clears throat> Citizens are also expected, it's the obligation of citizens to vote during election, in any election. They are supposed to cast their votes, make choice of candidate of their choice during election. It's part of the political obligations of citizens. Citizens can assist, are expected to assist law enforcement agencies in exposing crimes and criminals. That is, give law enforcement agencies information needed during their investigation so that crimes can be exposed. So when you have a criminal or crime is committed, it is the responsibility of a citizen to give the needed information to the law enforcement agency. Now, citizens are not expected to interfere with other people's rights. You don't tamper, you don't violate other people's rights. It is the responsibility of citizens to respect other people's rights and not to violate it. The citizens are supposed to show respect, showing respect to national symbols. Now we have what we call national symbols of a state. Now in national symbols we have national currency of a state. We are expected to treat it with care. You don't fold it like this or tear it. We have the coat of arms symbol of authority. We have the national, the constitution of the country as a national symbol. We have the national anthem. That is why a good citizen is expected to be at attention any time you hear the national anthem, whenever it is being sung. The national pledge is part of the national symbols of a country. Whenever you hear it, you're expected to be at the right posture and respect it. We have the national identity card, national passport, and rest of them. Every citizen is expected to show respect, even the president is a national symbol, to show respect to all this national symbol. Citizens are expected, it's the obligation of citizens, to be loyal and patriotic towards the country, that they should show loyalty to their country. They should show love to their country. Under the obligation of the country, citizens are expected to help to defend the country against external aggression or uprising. How do you do it? Do this. Citizens are expected whenever the country is fighting war or another country is attacking citizens, a good citizen should avail itself to be enrolled into the army to help and wage war against the country. In fact, you don't mind if you die in the course of fighting for your country. It's the responsibility of citizens because people must fight 
for the country, for the country to stay whenever there is war. Citizens are expected to obey leaders and constituted authorities. Leaders like the governors, deputy governor, president, vice president, members of the senior members of the even the law enforcement agencies, anybody that is in any, even the minute authority, even as a student in your school, you're expected to obey those constituted authorities, leaders, and those put <coughs> in positions of authority. Citizens are expected to observe environmental sanitation whenever it is declared. Observe it by not going to work at that time and also participating in keeping the environment clean. Citizens are expected to promote peace at all time in their state. Make sure they don't cause trouble. Make sure they mediate conflicts in their state. Also help to protect public properties or public amenities. Public properties like schools, public properties like transformer, pipelines, all those properties established by government citizens should help to watch over it and make sure people don't vandalize these properties. You help and give information to the law enforcement agency whenever people attempt to vandalize public properties. Citizens are expected to uphold and protect the good name of their country. You, you don't say negative things against your own country and whenever you go out of the country, as a, a good citizen, it is expected that you should do those things that promote the image of your country. You shouldn't commit crime or do anything in another country that dents the image of your country. Then, a citizen is expected to keep the state secrets, especially dream wars. There are things we call information that are secret to the state. So a good citizen should not give it out to other countries. Keep that thing that is regarded, treated as secret of the state, secret. Then a good citizen should serve as a witness when summoned. Now if you witnessed a crime, you were there when it happened, and the witness is needed to prosecute that crime, it is the duty of a good citizen to serve as witness whenever the need for it arises in the law court. Now, on citizenship education, we talk about national consciousness because you're expected to be a responsible citizen. A responsible citizen must display national consciousness. So let's look at the meaning of national consciousness. National consciousness is the shared sense of national identity and the shared understanding that a people who share a common ethnic, linguistic, or cultural background. Now, we are talking about having sense of identity as a people in a country, despite your cultural differences, despite your linguistic differences, despite your um, cultural background or language differences or religion, that shared sense of identity that you have as a member or members of a particular nation. It's what we call national consciousness. We also define it as strong feeling, knowledge, and awareness one has for one's country for the promotion of her common welfare and development. You talk about your knowledge, the knowledge you have about your country as a member of that country. And when we talk about national consciousness, as a citizen, to display national consciousness, you should be able to know the history of your country, know about the leaders of your country, know about the colonial masters, everything that pertains to your country, people that make up your country, you should be able to have good knowledge of your country. Now, let's look at a related concept, which is national unity. <clears throat> now, national unity is a process whereby people of diverse cultures, religious languages, political, social, and economic system are said to have a common goal as a nation and live together in harmony on that same government. Now, national unity we talk about in, mostly in a context where we have people of diverse ethnic origin coming together to form a nation, 
Example, in a country like Nigeria, we have different ethnic groups. Now, national unity, we're talking about a process where these people of diverse origin come together, see themselves as one, having a common goal and on living peacefully under the same government. So when we have this, we talk about national unity. <clears throat> now, how can we promote national consciousness and unity in a state? One, we should encourage patriotism among citizens. Through civic education, people can be encouraged to be patriotic, to display love, to display love and show love in the course of their country. There should be practice of good governance. When we talk about good governance, we are talking about the government delivering the dividends of democracy. That is, government that responds to the needs and expectations of the people. When government practices or shows good governance, now there will be national unity, as people will not, some people will not feel marginalized by the government. Now, formation of political parties with national outlook. Political parties that will be formed must have national orientation. That's their goal. Their objective must be about the whole country and not the goals of a particular part of the country. I'll give you an instance. In Nigeria, before the independence and during the First Republic, political parties we had then we are not national in outlook. And we are based on one particular ethnic group or region or the other. You have the action group for the West, Southwest. You have the NCNC, National Council of Nigeria and Cameroon for the Southeast, for the East. You have the um, Northern People's Congress for the North. So such parties did more in dividing the country than uniting it. So when you have political parties with national outlook and withdraw its members from all the parts of the country and their manifesto it targets the country, it will help to promote national unity. When we organize national cultural festivals, we are people we come, people of diverse ethnic groups, we come and showcase their culture for people also to appreciate our diversity. If we have such, national unity and consciousness can be enhanced and promoted. Then there should be promotion of cultural reorientation and awareness. We should have this teaching, this training about our traditions, about our culture, create awareness about these things. Then there should be encouragement of inter-ethnic and inter-tribal marriages. When we say inter-ethnic marriage or inter-tribal marriage, we are talking about a marriage where um, the man is from one ethnic group, the woman is from another ethnic group or tribe. So that's the kind of marriage. So when we have such, it will help to promote national unity because the man that marries from this ethnic group will have sense of belonging to the people of that ethnic group. The woman said. So when we have such thing, it will help to promote national unity. Also, when we promote, especially through the government, equal economic opportunities to every part of the country, having a kind of even development of all the parts of the country, it will help to promote national consciousness and unity. Also, when we have equal access to education, and not a particular region having access to education and the other not having. If all the people in the society, in the state, can have equal access, and how can we have this equal access? If the government can make at least the basic education free of charge, everybody will have equal opportunity to education. And when we have that, it will help to promote national unity and the consciousness Still on promoting <clears throat> national unity and consciousness, by promoting public education for national consciousness, there should be public education for national consciousness. And that is why we have civic education that helps talk about this national consciousness and unity. 
if we have it, it will provide national consciousness. Now, providing equal access to representation of in government. Now, there should be equal representation. All parts of the country should have equal access to representation in government. In Nigeria, for example, in the Senate, every state elects three senators. SAT elects one. Now, that gives them equal access to representation in government, every state. Now, if you come to the ministers, the president appoints ministers from different parts of the country, different states. So no state will dominate ministerial positions. So every state must be represented in ministerial positions so that we can have equal access to representation in government. So no state or part of the country is marginalized in this government. Now, for Nigeria, we can promote national consciousness by strengthening National Youth Service Corps scheme. Now, National Youth Service Corps scheme is uh, an institution or program established by the federal government which enables youth, graduate youth, to serve for one year in, a, in the ethnic group different from their own so that they can appreciate the diversity of our country. Some of them end up working in those places they serve. So by so doing, they will appreciate the diversity of our country. We'll talk more about it later. Now, we also can strengthen unity schools. In Nigeria, unity schools are what we call federal government colleges. Now, in unity schools, we have people from different ethnic origins in unity schools. So when people begin to mingle with people that are from their different ethnic origins, it will help to promote national unity because your classmates may be from this ethnic group, the other person from this ethnic group. So you mingle with people from different ethnic groups, make friends with them, which so national unity can be promoted. We can also promote religious tolerance. People should be able to respect and appreciate that we, everybody has right to religion and people should not condemn other people's religion. We should be able to tolerate our diversity in religion. So religious tolerance, promoting it both by the government, individual groups, and even religious leaders can help to promote national unity and consciousness. If you can recall, in a country like Nigeria, at times religion divides us. But if we can inculcate this religious tolerance, it will help to promote national unity and consciousness. Now, if you adopt indigenous languages as official language in our country, if we begin to adopt them, teach our indigenous languages, it will help to promote it. We can also promote national consciousness and unity by promoting civic education in school. <clears throat> that is ensuring that civic education is part of the curriculum and is a must for every student to go through the process of this citizenship education. Also, national consciousness can, and unity can be promoted if we reward national heroes and model. Uh, when we talk about national heroes, we're talking about people who have distinguished themselves by their positive contributions to the country. Then, if we establish national monuments and institutions of national unity, it can go a long, a long way in promoting national consciousness and unity. Now, let's look at these institutions that promote national unity in Nigeria. One is what we call the National Youth Service Corps. I was established in 1973 by the government of General Yakubu Gowon after the, sec of the civil war, which <clears throat> made uh, the civil war made people to be afraid or scared of going to ethnic group different from theirs in Nigeria. So he introduced the scheme we are graduates. We have one year compulsory service to the fatherland in ethnic group different from their own. By doing this, they will be able to appreciate the diversity of the country, even reside there. And uh, with this, national unity and integration can be promoted. 
We also have unity schools that we call federal government colleges. Now, these are institutions established by the yes, federal government college, federal government of the Nigeria under the Nayakubugo one to make students to mix up with uh, students from other ethnic groups and making friends with them. Of course, national unity can be promoted. National Assembly is also an institution that promotes national unity. Now, the National Assembly, you will see people, representatives from all the states of the country, from different tribes of the country, and all of them are there talking about Nigeria, Nigeria, how to better Nigeria, making laws for the whole country and discussing issues that affect Nigeria. The presidency is another institution of national unity. In the presidency, you see this president, you see the ministers from different um, states of the country and different tribes. So it helps. We also have the Federal Character Commission. In Federal Character, we talk about appointments and recruitment into any federal government establishment must reflect the diversity of Nigeria. Now, Federal Character Commission is a body established to ensure that appointment into and recruitment into federal government uh, establishment reflect the diversity of Nigeria. We also have Nigerian Defense Academy where uh, our military are trained. The military personnel are trained. Now, it's also an institution of national unity because over there, people mix, the uh, military mix up with people from diverse ethnic groups in Nigeria. Thank you. We have discussed citizenship education, national unity, and uh, consciousness. Now, let's go to our exam guide and do a practice on <clears throat> what we have discussed. Now, we select civic education because we are dealing with civic education. We select year at random so we can pick from any year, so that it can pick from any year. Then, for topic, we select topic of interest, citizenship, and uh, introduction to citizenship education. So let's answer questions from there. We get started. Now, one of the responsibilities of a good citizen is to A, possess international passport. You know, we, we don't expect it. Enjoy all amenities provided by the government. It's, this one is more of rights, more responsibility. Serve the country when required. Develop potentialities to the fullest. Now, it is serve the country when required in any capacity, including defense of the country. Now, the defense of territorial integrity of a country by her citizen is part of A, political participation, B, self-determination, and C, political culture, D, is part of the duties and obligations of citizens. Remember, we talked about defense of the country. Now, citizenship education will not help to achieve which of the following. It will help to achieve national unity, it will help to achieve education of the youth. It will help to promote democracy, but it will not help to promote moral decadence. Now, which of the following is the best way through which citizens can participate in politics of their state? Acquisition of a higher degree in political science, standing for elective position, learning the arts and science of political sagacity, undergoing mentorship under prominent political leaders standing for elective positions. They say, ask for what you can do for your country and not what your country can do for you. It denotes that, A, the country owes you no obligation as a citizen. B, citizens have both constitutional rights and obligations. C, fundamental rights are to be safeguarded by citizens. D, service and reward do not go together. It means that citizens have both constitutional rights and obligation. So ask for what you can do for your country, and that's obligation, and not what country can do for you. That's right. So but C, B is the answer. 
Now, citizenship education influences an individual to be, of course, patriotic. Thank you for participating in today's class. You can practice more questions using the exam guide app. The app scores and gives a detailed explanation of all questions at the end of your practice test. You can learn a particular topic of interest with different modes like study mode, mark mode, and practice mode. It also has other features that make learning fun. It is a must for all serious students. Download from www.examguide.com if you don't have it yet. See you in the next class. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, hit the notification bell, and share the videos to people that benefit from it. Bye.